morning. Today is a eventful day today on our uh, little farmstead. Today is uh, today is going to be butcher day. So this is Bandit. Say hi, Bandit. You know, I, I think we have this we have this thing in modern culture. Uh, you know, seventy five hundred years ago. People knew where the food came from, and uh, we have such a disconnect with our, our modern uh, supply systems and, and food culture and, and just where we obtain things from that we lose the connection with the land and with the farm and with the animals and we lose, we lose the, the, the uh, relationship between all things. You know, we take, and we take this very seriously. At this point, it's, it's all about the animal, and you know, Bannett has had a really, really good life on our farm. He's enjoyed the finest grasses, and he's had a lot of fun, and he's roamed and played, and and uh, now it's it's time for uh, him to complete his purpose. So today he's going to be uh, processed and skinned, and uh, then once we have a prepared carcass, we're going to take that, and um, I'll probably end up doing that tomorrow, and we will uh, process that carcass further into all the different uh, various cuts of meat and chops and that sort of thing. You might be wondering why we would do this. Um, it's it's like anything else. It's like the chickens. It's like the eggs. It's like the turkeys. It's like all the other things that we grow here on our farm. Everything has a purpose, and uh, the purpose is to uh, to feed our family and and to remind us that you know where things come from. If something is going to be here on the farm, it has to have a purpose. You know, as much as we like our animals, their purpose is to to put meat in the freezer, and it's going to be the same thing with you know the lamb, cows, the turkeys, the chickens, all that. So. Uh, that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, we are not going to uh, show uh, dispatching and then moving of the animal just because that's a, not something that a, a lot of people want to see. Uh, and there's other, other resources available for that if that's something you are interested in. We're going we're gonna to treat him with respect and then move his carcass over uh, to our processing area. And then uh, tomorrow we will, we will get him cut up into various cuts of meat. We are not experts. We are not even amateurs at this point, because this is one of our first uh, adventures into um, doing something like this. We're gonna go ahead and uh, finish our coffee, get the tractor around here and, and get some other things set up. Stick around if you wanna see a lamb butcher. And if you don't, this is probably where you should stop. But I do want you to think about where your food comes from. And uh, it's not just from a grocery store shelf. Um, Hey friends, it's the next day. Our uh, carcass has been sitting on ice uh, and we are just getting our station here prepped. Okay guys, uh, we got our carcass out here on our clean table and uh, we're gonna get started. Uh, like I said, he's been sitting on ice for a while. The knives I'm gonna be using, these are pretty decent knives uh, for this type of stuff. Um, these are Mercer, this, these are uh, uh, boning knives. Um, they make a straight and a, uh, a angle back version of this. Really, really sharp, high carbon steel. Uh, Victorinox makes a really similar knife. I, I, I like them both, but the Mercer's are just a little bit cheaper, so that's what I went with. So I think what I'm gonna do, one, two, three, four, five, six. And we're gonna grab our meat saw off of our clean table. Okay, come in here. Wow, a quick work of that. And we are through the spine. So we'll place our saw back over. And finish this cut.
Okay, so we've separated the saddle from our front rib and shoulder meat. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna count down eight ribs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we are gonna make a cut here. On both sides. Get our saw again. Okay. Okay. So now we've separated the saddle from the loin uh, just above the hips. So we are going to uh, cut this right through here. All right, so we're gonna separate our loin all the way across from our hind legs, so. Okay, so there's our loin. Um, that's where our chops are gonna come from. All right, we'll take care of that here in a minute and trim some of that up. Okay, let's cut our leg in half here, right down the spine, our, our pelvis. So. Okay, we are through that. All right, so we have our left and right leg. Uh, we need to rinse off a little bit. Okay. All right. Now we'll set that over here to the side for a moment. Put our saw back. Let's see. All right, so I'm gonna work on removing the pelvis here, getting this bone out.
Okay. Here's that uh, femur joint. So we're going to cut the iliofemoral ligament. All right, I did not do the best job of getting the meat off the bone there really cleanly. My butcher skills are, are uh, not up to par, so we're gonna lose a little of that. I may try to trim some of that off for some ground here in a little bit, uh, but that's our, that's our femur. So, as I understand it, this point forward is what we could consider our sirloin uh, so we're going to remove that off of there okay so that's our sirloin and uh we're just gonna cut that up into some steaks not the prettiest, but hey, all right, uh, let's see. And we're gonna cut at the knee joint right there. Come around. Knee ligaments are very, very tough. Okay, there's a shank. And here is our first side, our leg of lamb. So what I'm gonna do is remove this femur. So this is the outside of the muscle on the inside right here and cut down that seam between those two muscles and see if we can get this bone out. Okay. All right, there's our first femur um, and the kneecap. The kneecap is, is kind of under here. I don't know if you can, you can kind of tell that's kind of moving around like that. So we got that out. That, uh, that retinaculum, that, that uh, joint capsule around that knee joint is insane. And again, same problem as before. My butcher skills need some improvement. Not getting it as clean as I would like, but 
you know, there we are. So we got one leg of lamb right here. So I think I'm gonna tie this up and maybe cut it into a smaller roast because that's, that's just a lot of meat. My goodness, that's, that's two and a half pounds, maybe, maybe three. I don't know, we'll have to weigh it and see. Okay, there's our, uh, our first leg of lamb. We'll set that there. Uh, and we will move on to the next leg, repeat our process. And uh, hopefully I'll improve a little bit on the second one. Welcome back. I did not realize it, but Farrah came out and to help me and uh, she told me my video was not recording, so I have no idea where it cut off at. Uh, but just to catch you up for what I've been doing while I was talking to a camera that wasn't working. Um, we got our leg shanks. We're working on our, our second leg here. Um, our sirloins are cut. We got our femur and pelvis out here in the way. This is our loin, our saddle, and then our front part we're gonna deal with later. I was just removing the gland out of the uh, out of one of the legs. So there's our leg, leg of lamb, and we're gonna go ahead and get the second femur out of this roast get the gland removed, and then we will uh, move on to cutting our chops out of our loin. Okay, so those are our second leg of lamb. All right, so we just kind of sped through some of that. Um, I'm gonna get some of these things off the table that I'm not really gonna save, and uh, see if we can do something with the rest of this here. All right, so Ace, get back, buddy. I'm not gonna give you any of this. All right, we're gonna cut off our uh, flank there. Just kind of lay that to the side. Same thing with this one. You can kind of come in and get that off. Okay, there's our other flank. Probably not the best way to do this, but I just wanted to get some of this connective tissue out of the way. Just to clean this up just a little bit. Okay. All right, so here's our spine. Um, I don't know if you can see this. Let me see if I can get it a little closer to the camera on our loin. Um, it's hard to tell without it being scraped with the, the bone saw and stuff. But uh, this is your, your loin where your chops come from. So unlike beef, uh, this would be your, your tenderloin filet, and this would be your loin or your, you know, what would be like a New York strip. Um, and this is the spine. This is the vertebrae. Spinous process, transverse process is off to the side, and uh, your central canal is right there. So what we're going to do is split this right here. And that's going to give us our, you know, traditional T-bone uh, style chop. And then we'll cut them up into chops. All right. All right. We got our meat saw ready to go. That was my wrestling name in high school. Just kidding. Just kidding. I didn't go to high school. All right. That's straight. It's hard, so hard to tell. If 
only they made some kind of a saw for this, like that was banded, you know, like a, almost like a band saw. That'd be nice. All right, so we went just to the side of the central canal. And so this is the spinal cord intact in the thecal sac. So we're gonna get rid of that and just scrape that out for, oh man, that saw will wear you out, I'm out of breath, crazy. Maybe I should be doing more of it. I need to get back in the gym, but I took a couple weeks off because of a shoulder issue. And, uh, but here we are, so maybe it's time to go back. All right. Well, not like super perfect, but pretty darn close to it. I, uh, I got right through the spinous process so I'd say that's a fairly successful cut. So I'm pretty happy with that. We'll scrape some of the meat dust off here. And uh, actually, you know what? Let me grab my other knife. Let me grab my straight one. And uh, I'll go ahead and get some of this meat pulled off of here. Yeah, some of this stuff, this bone dust, needs to, you gotta rinse and scrape that stuff off cause it's just kind of nasty. You don't really wanna be, I mean, I guess you could eat it, but I don't know, I just think it's gross. I'm, I'm unaware of any uh, like health reason that you shouldn't eat it, although there may be one. I just uh, don't wanna eat it. Okay. All right, so we're gonna cut our uh, our chop loin. Let me get a little closer so you guys can see this. So there's our loin, here's our chop. Um, you know, the like on a cow, New York strip, filet, whole thing makes a T-bone. Um, so we're gonna cut these into, into our chops and we should get at least six out of that, I think. One, two, three, yeah, six. So we're gonna, we're gonna get about 12 chops out of this, out of this loin. All right, we'll set the second one up here for the time being. I'm gonna have to sharpen that knife here in a second. Let's see, that looks about right. We'll cut there, 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 there. Uh-oh, hit a bone. Which is fine, but to make a saw for it, right? Okay, and we will cut this. Buying a bandsaw. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> we got one tiny little chop. That's so funny to me how much effort it takes just to get this little piece of meat. But it is so good. But yeah, first chop. So that's great success. Okay, all right, let's get the rest of these cut. Okay guys, um, 
we are to the point where we uh, kind of took a break there for a minute and I worked on cleaning up a little bit of stuff while Farrah has actually gone getting me a chopper to finish cutting up these loins. So it's only been a few minutes. Um, I went ahead and removed the neck from the uh, part of our shoulders and I cleaned up this, uh, the rest of our saddle and kind of cut off the, uh, the, the cartilage and the rest of what would be considered the belly or flank meat. Um, and I made some lines for what I want to do with this. How I want to treat this, a lot of times what you'll see is they'll do a, uh, you know, they'll cut the ribs somewhere up in here and you'll see that like fringed rack of lamb. It's cool to do, I guess, for a skill, but I have no interest in that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just, and basically just treat it like little mini tiny ribeyes. So I'm going to leave us a, a bone in ribeye and cut them here, make them like short chops. And then I'm actually just going to take the mid sections of the ribs and leave them whole and treat them like how I would treat, uh, you know, like if I was going to put some ribs on the barbecue, like baby backs or whatever. So we'll do that. And then these little pieces, um, we'll, we'll maybe braise those or something and uh, put those with some vegetables. Uh, but yeah, we got our loin chops. We got the rest of our flank stuff, which is going to be ground. Um, we're going to finish up our shoulder. But so the next thing we're, that we're going to start working on is uh, we're going to get our cleaver uh, that Farrah went to get, and we're going to uh, finish our chops up and get those gone so we can actually uh, start getting some of this stuff processed and weighed. And uh, I'm going to work on this rib section, and then uh, we're going to finish up with the, you know, the front shoulder area. So let me, uh, let me take my... Still, let me just put just a little bit. You know, a lot of times people think this is for sharpening. A, a knife steel like this is not for sharpening. When you hone an edge on a knife and you got a razor sharp edge and you're hitting it against bone and things, that, that metal on that really fine edge, it will actually fold over to one side and you'll feel a burr. Um, and so what this is for is for straightening that burr back out and straightening that metal up. So it doesn't actually sharpen anything because it doesn't remove any metal. It's just for straightening. Make sense? If you want to actually sharpen, you got to take it to a stone or, uh, you know, like a ceramic rod or something like that. So we're just straightening up the edge on our knife here. So we can uh, get started doing that. All right. If I could hit it in the same spot, it might work. Oh, poor little chop. I'm so sorry. I feel like I need to apologize to this thing. I'm just glad your thumb didn't come off. Yeah, this one's kind of mangalitsed or whatever. Mangled. I don't know. That's a pig breed, right? <laughs> clean these up and wrap them in lamb. Okay. Perfect. Bye. Bye. Ah! Just kidding. Ha <laughs> ha. She looked. <laughs> I'm getting uh, what she refers to as Mrs. Potato Head Eyes. You guys ever seen that from like the Toy Story movie? Where she does the eyes. She's not happy with him when that happens, so I guess that's what's going on now. All right, I'm going to finish getting this trimmed up. Man, I really made, I mean, literally, this is a hack job because uh, I'm hacking it, but, like, I'm not a fan of that. So that goes in the bucket, and we'll get our trim knife, and uh, we will trim this up. Okay, all right. I mean, it's still edible, and I'm the one eating it. Golly, I would not, would not, uh, would not pass butcher class. I would fail. This would be horrible. This man, this takes a lot of skill. Like, it's, it's, it's awesome to learn things, new things like this, and practice them, and you know, try your own hand at them and stuff. And uh, 
I really like doing that kind of thing. Uh, but golly, um, there's nothing, you know, the, the, those guys that make it look easy and then you come in and you try it and you're like, oh yeah, I can do that. No, you can't, man. There is a significant amount of skill that goes into this. I mean, you should be brave enough to try something new at the same time. Don't let inexperience or lack of skill hold you back from trying something. Uh, try something. Like everybody starts somewhere and, uh, you know, you'll get better as you go. Um, if you can cut up a, a piece of meat that you buy from the store and cut up a chuck roast or stew meat or whatever, you could do this. You just have to, you know, study a little bit of the anatomy and, and uh, kind of learn where to make the cuts and things. And there's plenty of educational resources out there for that on YouTube. I already mentioned the Bearded Butchers. Those guys are fantastic. I love watching their content on uh, Instagram and, and wherever else I watch it. I have no idea. I just see them everywhere. So, so I, I really like watching their content. We're gonna finish up these chops. Then I'm gonna get started on the rib section. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to cut the rib connections off of the spine and pull the spine out holding one piece without having to saw through it because this saw is just it's just really kind of a bear to use so um, we may use it to cut through the ribs though that might that might go pretty easy but that's what we're going to do so we're going to finish this up All right, guys, so we finally chopped through our chops, and my goodness, to me, these things look awful. A bandsaw would definitely help presentation, but we do have all of our chops done, so uh, we'll go ahead and line those up and take a look at them. Some of them actually look pretty good. Uh, and we will get these inside and packaged and weighed, and uh, we'll see how we did from there. So that one looks a little rough, but not bad. The uh, the chopping definitely definitely is is not something that makes them pretty. Okay, so there's our uh, our chops. Like I said, they're not pretty. All right, let's get started on the rib section. I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna cut this with a saw down through here. Okay, we're through that, and we still got all that uh, tissue on the back side there, so we'll cut that off. So it's our little lower rib portion. We'll clean that up, and uh, we'll use that for something. Okay. See if we can do that up here a little higher with our other ribs. I think that's the ticket. You got to have something to push against. All right. We're going to separate that out. So there's one, one rib portion. Um, this other little bit of meat has the shoulder blade still attached to it right there. So actually, you know what? The cartilaginous part of that shoulder blade is surprisingly flexible. That is not something that I was expecting. That was, uh, that's kind of wild. Okay, we're just gonna trim that off. That can be more trim. That is gonna be our ribeye section. Uh, let's see. And where our ribs actually attach along the spine here. Just gonna see if we can uh, cut those out. Well, the short answer is, yeah, you can do it, but it's kind of a pain in the butt. 
So maybe that wasn't a good idea. Maybe I do need to cut this thing down the middle. Or just take the ribs out entirely. Maybe. Maybe that's why people do the lamb chops the way they do. Just because of the difficulty there. All right. Okay, there's our second rib section. We'll clean those up and uh, we'll see if we can smoke those later and see how they are. Kind of small, but uh, it is what it is. All right, I'm gonna remove the uh, shoulder blade off this one again. It's just, it's wild how flexible that is. Okay. You know, a lot of people like to leave this fat on here. There's nothing wrong with that. It's actually really good. Uh, but, I mean, to a certain extent. There's nothing wrong with eating, eating some fat. Fat's good for you. But it's like anything else. Too much is, is not, is not good. So, actually, we'll cut that. That can go there, that can go there. And same thing on this side. We'll pull this back off. And that can go there, and that can go there. Okay. Okay. So basically what I'm doing here is just following the vertebral body around down to the rib where I want to cut through those ribs, pulling the meat off the spine. All right, um, you know, this isn't your like super pretty French rack and all that stuff, but uh, this will end up making some really nice looking little ribeyes. 
and we'll treat them basically the same way we do the chops. I'll uh, sear them in a pan, you know, or grill them, either way, and uh, they'll be delicious. Okay, so there's one little bone in ribeye. There's another. Some of these are, are going to have two ribs. Some of them are going to have one. Some of them might even fall off their rib. Okay, there's that. Let's see if we can get the other side. Okay, you just got to kind of work that knife in around those rib heads, apparently, just to pop those ribs out. So this side actually went a little better than the first side. Uh, we'll chalk that up to learning curve experience. So, you know, you do it once, you mess up and figure out, oh, I should do that differently. And then you, you get a little better with it, with your skill set, your tactile skills and your knife work and all that. So um, learn by doing, learn by doing. Okay. So here's what's left of our spine. We got just a tiny little bit of meat up next to these spinous processes that I didn't get it as clean as I'd like. But it's uh, it's pretty well done. You can see those those rib uh, rib sockets in there where the ribs attach to the spine. And uh, we are going to just let an animal have that. That's gonna be nice and nice and chewy for them. All right, let's go ahead and cut this up into our Little ribeye steaks. One dose. Or as they say in Russia, tree. When I was in high school, um, our Spanish teacher, Judy Warner, nice lady. Uh, her and I did not always see a eye to eye on a lot of things, but nice lady. She uh, was taking German classes at the time, not German, Russian, excuse me. She was taking Russian classes at the time and uh, she's like, it was very difficult to learn Russian and all these other things. And, and I just remember, I remember that she was telling us that she could never get her pronunciation right and her German teacher was like very frustrated with her and took her outside and was like look at this tree and she's like how do you say that and she's like tree and she's like that's how you say three in Russian she's like stop trying to get crazy with it so if any of you speak Russian I have no idea I just remember that story from from uh, Spanish class so okay we got our chops we got our what's going to be our ground we got our ribs um, and fairs inside working on some of the rest of that so we're going to take a break Okay, guys, we've moved on to doing our front part here. Let me just set some of this aside. Uh, move our saw and our cleaver. 
because I hope we don't need that anymore. Um, man, some of this, some of this got a little dirty, which I mean is fine. We'll clean it off. It'll be fine. Yow! That was dumb, William. Why'd you do that? I think I just cut myself. These things are sharp. You gotta be careful. All right, so we're just trimming off some little bits here. Um, I think I'm gonna leave the front legs whole and then do it kind of like a shoulder thing. Um, but I'm just basically, I'm gonna pull this apart. I've just cut through the sternum and uh, we're just gonna pull our leg and uh, cut through some of that shoulder. Yeah, look at that, it's right off. And then right in there is our glenoid socket. Oh, no, wait, that's a lie. That's a shoulder blade. The glenoid is actually up here. All right, so we take that and uh, let's see here. Where is the glenoid actually? Yeah, so do I leave the shoulder blade on that? You know what? I think I'm just going to leave that as it is. I'm just going to leave the shoulder blade. Um, but I am going to trim up, trim off some of this fat that got a little dirt on it because that uh that stuff really sticks does not like to come off and uh, here we have the clavicle there's a bit of the clavicle in here uh, i'm gonna just remove that too just to make that a little cleaner looking a little nicer looking and uh, pull some of this off okay so uh oops set that down on the table got even more stuff on it yikes all right so there's one shoulder. Okay, we're back with the rest of our front section. We're just trimming up some of this. Uh, just trying to get some of this stuff off here that isn't so great. Ace is loving having little treats. He's getting a snack every so often. Um, we're gonna pull the rest of that shoulder out and just cut through some of this fascia. Just kind of work our way around through here. And uh, let's see. All right, did not get that one as clean as the other one. The other side, I think I got a little cleaner. But uh, yeah. Okay, but there is our, uh, there's your second leg. And uh, we will clean those up and, and uh, be ready to go. So now we just have the uh, front part of the lamb breast and the lower part of the neck that we uh, haven't done something with. So. I'm going to go take a look in the book and uh, try to figure out what in the world I want to do with this because this is the one part that I just really didn't have a good plan for. Uh, so we're going to go get our favorite uh, homestead butcher butcher book and uh, try to figure out what in the world we want to do. All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, we went in and got our butchering book. Um, this is probably one of the most helpful resources uh, that we've come across. It was recommended to us. Uh, but yeah, I've recommended it to other people. It's uh, Butchering by uh, Adam Danforth. Um, James Beard Award winning, fantastic resource. There is uh, so much information in here. He's got like really good descriptions, uh, really good pictures. This should kind of show you everything that you need to do. And uh, so we're gonna look in our sheep section here. They also make one for beef that goes through, you know, the entire process of doing an entire cow. And that is something that I want to do, uh, but really if I was starting out with a cow, I think I'd be way in over my head with all the different cuts and things. It's just, I'm really glad that we decided to do a smaller ruminant first. And once I do a few of these and, and get better and better at it and figure out our processes and how, just how to work with the materials, um, we'll be a lot better. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so when we're looking at shoulder cut, um, You know, I've, I've got my, uh, I just kind of left my front leg, my fore shank and my shoulder all in one piece. So uh, I may separate those. I may separate those later. I'm not sure. Um, according to what this in the book, what they call a primal cut, um, they have it separated a little differently. Uh, let's see. You can comfortably break down a carcass on a two by four foot surface, although larger is better. Good to know. Uh, let's see. 
Let's see. Neck. Shoulder, rack, breast. Okay. So they knife around the base of that. And then they leave the uh, front portion. They kind of leave the breast uh, in with, or, or the, the shoulder portion here that I have left here at the base of the neck. They kind of leave that in with the shoulder and I've separated those. So I guess there's not really, uh, as far as guidance, what I was looking for was guidance. There's not a whole lot of guidance with this. So um, just because of the recommendation of the book, I think what I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just cut these out and separate them and take that shank off of there uh, so I had I have a shoulder and a shank and uh, it'll be a little smaller than what it's probably supposed to, do, to, to uh, be but uh, you know we'll, we'll be okay we'll be we'll be just fine with that okay so as you can see in the, in the in the book here they have all the different cuts and things out um, you know what you're what you're looking at there with the, uh, the loin and the rib and the neck portion so they just kind of leave all that together um, in the the square they call it a square cut shoulder and you can get all your different roasts and things out of that uh, so what I may do is just try to separate the actual what I may try to do is just separate the actual like shoulder roast meat out of this um, and treat it like kind of like what you would think of in the store is like like a pork tenderloin kind of a size you know, a small little loin, and we'll we'll treat it like that. Uh, the rest of this breast meat is on the bottom half here and on the side. I'll see if I can get some of that off, and that'll just go into our pile for ground, uh, and we'll just freeze that and grind it at a later date. So that's kind of what we're going to do. Okay, so awesome. I think I have a plan moving forward. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, going to come in here, and uh, I think we're going to just separate that right there. And follow that rib up to the spine. Go up and out. Up and out. Okay. So there's one loin. You know, this side I did not get as well as I did the other side because when I was taking that leg off, I, I kind of cut into this this uh, shoulder meat here a little bit. I wish I wouldn't have done that, but I did. So, you know, it is what it is. And we will just kind of come in here and follow that uh, spine up around the rib cage there. Just following that rib cage up, letting the bones be our guide. Yeah. We've made some mistakes along the way, but you know, you know what, you know, we should just treat this like Bob Ross and just say, there are no mistakes. There's only happy little butchering accidents. So there's a happy little loin. All right. Okay, so I'm going to trim the rest of this up and see if I can pull as much as I can off of here. I may try to save, uh, you know what, there's not much breast meat left. I've gotten almost all of it off. All right, I'm going to see if I can pull some more off of this just to put in our ground pile. Uh, and then we'll go in and uh, look at our, our cleaned up stuff. When we get it all done, we'll, we'll come back and look at all that and look at our totals and see what we got. So we're going to finish this up here. All 
clean the rest of these ribs up and uh, just kind of put a lot of that down into our, our ground pile. And, uh, so we'll come through here and separate that down through there. You know, maybe that's not worth it. That's not a whole lot of meat out of the middle of that. These intercostal muscles are uh, not a lot to them. So maybe I won't do that. Maybe I'll just leave it. I don't really feel like the juice is worth the squeeze, so to speak, on that one. Like I'm going to put a lot of effort into getting that meat off of there. And uh, I'm just not going to have a lot to show for it. I'm just going to clean the outsides and uh, put those in our ground pile. And uh, that will be good enough for us. Like, is it how a butcher would do it? Probably not. Probably not. But uh, is it how old Wee Willie Wilkerson is going to do it? You betcha. Not sure why I gave myself that name, but whatever. Here we are. Here we are doing a thing. All right. There's a little bit more meat on the front of this neck here. Let's see if we can pull that off. Let's see. That would be the... Longest coli muscle for you anatomy nerds. Golly, you know what? That's got so much connective tissue in it right there. Nah, we're just going to leave that. We're just going to let that ride. All right, let's go ahead and separate out our legs like we talked about. We'll, we will do that. We'll go ahead and do that. So we're going to come in across here, cut across. Beautiful leg meat. All right, just kind of pull that shank out. And we'll get our saw. Uh, no, you know what? We'll put that over there. Okay. All right. So we separated out our shank and uh, from our shoulder cut. So we'll go ahead and put our shoulder there, our shank here, and let's go ahead and do the other side there. We'll go ahead and separate that too. All right, last time with our saw, thank goodness. All right. Okay, so we've got our, uh, our two shoulder cuts here. We got our shanks. Um, those will need to be scraped and cleaned up a little bit. Uh, we got our, what's left of our carcass. Uh, our two uh, loins off the neck. We got our little short ribs. Those will be good for stew meat. Our loin chops. These are all our little ribeye cuts, our ribs, and our ground meat. So we're going to freeze this, uh, get some of this washed up and, and cleaned up and get it frozen, and then we'll weigh it all and uh, let you know what our yield was. Mm -hmm.